Hello, in this short video we're going to take a look at galena and sphalerite. That's lead ore and zinc ore. Starting with our lead ore then, so this is galena, this is the most common ore of lead in the world. This is lead sulphide, uh, chemical formula PBS. Uh, as you can see its colour is like a silvery sparkly colour, it's very very pale bluey silvery. Um, when it's kind of exposed to the elements it tarnishes down and weathers to kind of a dark grey, a bit similar to this here, it doesn't really look much like uh, lead until you see the corners where it's chipped. Um, if you take a dull piece of lead ore just off the floor um, you can actually very very easily polish it up. Just got a file here and you can see how that really starts to sparkle very quickly but if we left that outside that will soon go dull as it kind of patinas over again. So Galena's got a very high specific gravity, basically it's very dense and you notice that as soon as you pick it up, even small amounts, so you know, compared to an equivalent sized piece of limestone that is very heavy, very dense. Galena is the most common type of lead ore in, in the world. Um, it was quite easy to smelt, it's got a very low melting point. Um, if you put nuggets of this galena into a fire, set the fire going, uh, the sulphur would burn off and the lead would melt and dribble down into the ashes where it could be collected. Um, some of the earliest types of lead smelting facilities were known as bowls, that's B-O-L-E, and they were like stone enclosures, usually built on top of a hilltop uh, or on a ridge, somewhere exposed. They'd be open on one side, usually the windward side, so the wind would rush in, um, it would help fan the fire and get the temperature up and the sulphur would burn off and the lead would just dribble down and collect together in a bowl, a stone trough um, or casting dish at the bottom. Um, very kind of low efficiency but very very low tech and there are an awful lot of hillsides with the name bowl in them, certainly in uh, Derbyshire and the White Peak uh, and all around the UK. Um, Bowls were typically in use from at least the 12th century right through to the 16th century. Um, the bowl smelting was replaced uh, by the smelt mill around about the late 16th century, um, but that in turn was replaced by smelting in cupolas, which is a, a variety of reverberatory furnace in the 18th century. Um, so Galena gets its name from the Roman word plumbum, which is the Latin word for lead. Um, the word plumbing and the use of the PB chemical symbol comes from this word. It's probably something you remember from uh, uh, GCSE chemistry that. A typical specimen of Galena is about 86% lead, 14% sulphur by weight. However, some of the specimens of galena contain up to a few percent of silver by weight. These are called argentiferous galena because of their silver content. Um, some of the mines around Derbyshire have the word royal in the title, um, and royal was often associated with mines that produced silver or gold. Um, but also, if you produced enough silver as a byproduct from lead mining, you'd often put the word royal in your mine if it was a, a worthwhile percentage return. Obviously, silver was a very highly valuable mineral, so you'd only need you know, a very, very tiny percentage of uh, this ore to contain silver before it started to produce you a decent income on its own. Um, Galena was often associated with the mineral sphalerite, which is a, a zinc ore, um, and that's why so many of our larger metal mines in the UK are known as lead zinc mines. Um, the two big examples in North Wales would be Park and Aberthlin. Um, so let's have a look at sphalerite now. This is sphalerite, one of the most common types of zinc ore in the world. Um, the miners have several old names for this. Um, it's also known as zinc blend or blackjack. Um, this is zinc sulphide, but it almost always contains iron. Um, so its chemical formula kind of purely would be ZnS, um, but it's most likely to be ZnFeS, so zinc, iron and sulphur. Um, its colour is usually grey to grey black, it can be shiny or dull when the iron content is quite high, um, but with less iron in it or the inclusion of other elements, the ore can even be yellow, brown, black, red, green, white, uh, it can even be colourless or translucent and some sphalerite has been cut into gemstones. 
Um, sadly not the type I've got in my hand here, this is just a bit more of the dull blacky grey variety. Um, the name Sphalerite is from a Greek word, Sphaleros, which means deceiving or treacherous. Uh, this name is in response to the many different appearances of Sphalerite and because it could be really challenging uh, to identify. Zinc smelting has historically been a lot more difficult than the smelting of most other metals. Um, in comparison, zinc has a very low boiling point. It'll just kind of uh, evaporate off um, before most other metals have even melted. Um, so the temperature is typically used for smelting lead. Zinc becomes a gas and that just escapes uh, from the furnace in the fumes and will be lost. Uh, it was un wasn't until the 1740s that a method of recovery uh, became more efficient following the introduction of a type of flue condenser which was patented by a chap called William Champion of Bristol. Prior to that, most zinc just, just simply burnt off in the smelting process, um, but from the mid-1700s, uh, zinc became a viable um, byproduct and co-product of lead, so some of the mines suddenly became a lot more profitable as they could recover and sell the zinc as well. Both this sample of galena and the sphalerite are attached to igneous rocks, volcanic rocks from North Wales, um, but these ores can occur in just about any geology, certainly within limestone as most commonly in Derbyshire and up in the northern Pennines around places like Alston and Nent Head. Um, and these just turned up in waste tips uh, on the surface, so these have just been missed by the miners um, or deliberately left behind when the mine shut. And this is really common, so the galena de lead ore, you're going to see this underground in mines all the time in what's left of the mineral veins. Not in, in huge quantities, obviously they were there to, to mine it, so they wouldn't have just left it. Um, but you can see this very commonly um, still within the vein materials, um, especially where it's been recently broken or disturbed. Um, the sphalerite is much harder to find, I've only seen you know, very very little of this underground, um, normally in small traces, so this uh, nice nugget of, nugget of ore here was a particularly lucky find uh, for me, but certainly side by side you can see the difference. The galena is, is a much paler silver, whereas the zinc ore, the sphalerite here, is much darker. Um, but certainly the lead ore, the galena, is much more common um, and you should become very familiar with identifying that uh, in the lead mines if you're operating in those with groups. So there you go, galena, lead ore, sphalerite, zinc ore. Hopefully you know a little bit more about those now and we'll have some photos uh, up in a minute, a bit of close-up so you can see the crystal structure um, make it a bit easier to identify in the walls. Okay. One final thing to remember, all of these samples here have either been bought or collected from the surface. None of this has been chipped away or taken off underground. What we encounter down in the mines, we need to leave it there so future generations can see it and enjoy those places in the same way that we can. So please don't go out and start hacking minerals out of places. Be responsible in your collection of them. Buy good quality samples or pick up from surface tips if you have to. So I have a small collection of stuff which I purely use for education running the uh, Cave and Mine Leader training courses. Other than that we should leave it where we see it for others to enjoy.